Welcome to Buckets, brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. My name is Matt Moore. I'm the senior NBA writer for the Action Network. This is your Wednesday Best Bets episode for the NBA. Everything we talk about today can be found in the award-winning Action Network app. It's the best way for you to track your picks. You get up to the second information where the bets and money are coming in on. And you can find picks from gentlemen such as the ones joining me this evening. First up, we got Jay Money. You can find him on Twitter at JMoneyIsMoney. Jay, the Utah Jazz did not in fact, come through for us on Tuesday night. That was rough. Yeah, it happens, man. I'm still still happy, though, still living good, man. Obviously, the NBA is tough right now, but um, everything's going good with me, my guys. So what about you, Sean? Sean Lill also joining us. You can find him on Twitter at Chicago Flow and in the Action Network app. Sean, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. I, um, I bet a little bit of money on Giannis over his point Ooh. total, and it felt like a loss. felt like I, I left some money on the table, but – we we were we got an opportunity to make some more money on this Wednesday slate. Yeah, uh, Pod had a rough day on Tuesday as the Boston Celtics. You know, as soon as Shea Gilders Alexander got ruled out, as soon as that happened, mm-hmm. I was like, oh shit! And like, if you no, notice no. in the action network app, I live bet Boston at half just because I was like, okay, they lose without Shea, but they don't cover, so maybe the Celtics will stage a come. Nope, Celtics re- regression regression's a bitch sometimes. So uh, Boston going <laughs> yeah. through it right now uh but we're gonna go move on to wednesday's slate we'll go around the the table give our best bets then we'll break down the cap on them uh we'll start tonight with jay jay what's your best bet for the wednesday slate yeah a couple plays for me i'm gonna rock with magic on the full game and i'm gonna rock with the hawks in the first half a couple of bounce back jay spots all right so the hawks are first half they are dogs on the road versus the kings on a back-to-back shows you where atlanta's power rating has slid obviously uh and the orlando magic taking on the same oklahoma city thunder who are going to be on the road on the second night of a back-to-back uh magic minus one and a half on that one sean what's your best bet for wednesday memphis grizzlies minus seven minus 110 i'm gonna buy low on a bad road team Certainly are buying low on a bad road team. We'll get back to that one in a second. My two plays on the Wednesday slate. Best bet, Bulls Nets under 235. Love that one. Really like that one. I may add more onto Bulls Nets under 235. Uh, I also have the Los Angeles Lakers plus four and a half and on the money line at home versus the Miami Heat. Uh, Let's go ahead and circle back and we'll come back around to Jay's best bets. All right, so Jay, we got the Atlanta Hawks here. Hawks have been in kind of a tailspin lately, but they're taking on a Kings team at home on the second night of a back-to-back. Why do you like the Hawks in the first half here? Yeah, I'm kind of going back and forth bef- between the first half and the full game. I do believe the Hawks tra- cast a trifecta spot. Um, this, this team is all four straight losses, but they have somewhat owned um on the uh, on the Kings of late. They're this is a six straight and six game and nine nights for the Kings plus a back to back. And the Hawks are three and zero straight up and against the spread last three versus them. We know that Trey Young loves to go up against De'Aaron Fox. Um, and once again they already beat them earlier this year. That was in Atlanta. Once again they're catching the Kings on the back to back with the rest disadvantage i know that the hawks went to double overtime with the warriors but they also showed some cojones in that game down 19 points come all the way back and really had a chance to win the game probably should have won the game so all four straight losses uh, i think the hawks come in here with with some em- emphasis and uh, attention to detail and sense of urgency so i like the hawks um early in this one and often to be honest with you just make sure the emphasis on the is on the right syllable uh so i, I was actually looking at this earlier based off of the I'm doing this. I've got a trends article up on Action Network. You can find it in the Action Network app because I was looking at, at rest spot this season in terms of the back to backs. The home home back to backs are especially profitable. But if you're home in the second night of a back to back, even if you were away, this is actually a really favorable spot so far this season for whatever reason. My theory on it is that home court advantage is so exaggerated this season. We see that in all sorts of metrics, just like home teams are killing it, home teams very exaggerated. And more specifically, I think even less than home teams are good, road teams are bad. Uh, So what's interesting kind of here is home teams on the second night of a back-to-back this season when they were on the road for the previous night. So it's a back-to-back set on the Sega Baba, you're home. They're 31 and 15 straight up, 25, 17 and four, 60% against the spread. So you're going up against that here uh, with the Hawks. Um, which is certainly definitely what you want is you want to be going up against strong trends with this Atlanta team that drives me absolutely fucking insane. Um, I will say my numbers do kind of give this a little bit of an edge here. Um, I've got this closer to a pick'em in some regards, and I've got 
power rating is going to lean towards Sacramento here, right? So I get I get why this line I actually think this line is light based off of power rating with how Atlanta has played or uh, and honestly how Sacramento has played. I don't mind the spot here. Is there any sort of matchup edge that you like it or is it more just like I like the spot specifically for this Kings team? I will say coming off of that crazy ending in Utah, this might be a little bit more of an exaggerated effect on the back to back. This might be a letdown spot. Yeah, well, first off, the Hawks came out so terribly in Golden State. I'm pretty sure they're saying, look, guys, we can't come out, get down 19 points, right? You have mm-hmm. a, you have to have a better start. And I do like the matchups as well, Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. And another thing, Sabonis can't play defense right now. He obviously has a hurt thumb slash hand. He's all offense on defense. He's literally letting you not necessarily go by you, but he can't even attempt to block shots right now, hack anything down low. So I think the the, the Hawks have the advantage down low. And, I, yes, I do like uh, the Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. They went off. Trey Young went off for, I believe, 32 points in the last game. Uh, Trey Young and DeJounte Murray, I'll take that duo in this one uh, versus De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis. And I think the bench might be slightly better for the uh, Hawks here as well, plus the rest advantage. So, yeah, give me ATL here. I'm sure no one wants them. So, give them to me. Okay. Uh, Orlando Magic, I'm going to stay away from this one. Orlando Magic minus one and a half taking on the thunder so the thunder on this back to back they they sit shea gillers alexander uh he's out with an illness don't know what his status is going to be for this back to back tomorrow in orlando um that's not a long trip but i wouldn't say it's a short trip either from from oklahoma all the way down to florida so a little bit of a travel spot here for the thunder um if if i had seen again if i had seen that shea was out i would have gone another direction on that game based off of the fact that the thunder are excellent the last two seasons when shea gillers alexander is out of the lineup and they are at home so th- these kind of conditions have to be in play here uh for for there to be a spot with shea gillers alexander and it, to me it makes a lot of sense from the perspective of that thunder team is so disciplined shea is considered to be like the only like really good player so it, to me, it makes sense that like there would be an overreaction in the market based off of that. Um, but I kind of wonder if that's going to hold up on the road. Um, the Thunder is still good without Shea Gillis Alexander this season uh, on the road. Without Shea, they're ten and seven against the spread, fifty nine percent when Shea's not in the lineup. Uh, on the road however one of the the promising spots i think for you here and by the way there's 65 percent in the last two seasons without shea on the road but this has been a, a thing i did notice here is okay so the thunder play really disciplined and that's always been like a really the strength of theirs their ats performance on back-to-back spots is not nearly as good so like, they are just not one of the better teams on the second night of a back-to-back um they are just six and six ATS last two seasons on the second night of a back-to-back on the road. So I kind of get that. Is there a matchup spot or a reason that you like Orlando here? Is this just fading OKC in the spot? Yeah, I'll be honest. There's a lot of match. There's a lot of things that I like with this game. It's pretty simple with me. The Thunder playing a team that they have more wins than they tank the game away. I've I've noticed something with them, um, and it's exactly what I think is going to happen. Obviously, you get the other team closer to you, right? It, it makes perfect sense if you think about it for the, for better draft purposes for the Thunder. But not only that, you do find a revenge spot for the Magic here. Um, they, if I'm not mistaken, they led by double digits in OKC earlier this year. Basically, tanked that game away. I mean, you kind of scratch your head or whatever, but they end up. Losing losing by eight points they had the game and basically just gave it up in the fourth quarter i know that this team is banged up i'd really like for them to have franz wagner out there but uh, still they'll still have a major size advantage down low i know you have to get there thunder play really good perimeter defense here but i don't care if sga plays or not I actually hope he's in you'll get we probably get magic as a dog here but i think uh ben carroll winter carter jr and mo bamba eat in this game yeah, I'd wait and see if this number flips and what flips too. Uh, let's give Shea the full three points on this. That, that goes ahead and flips this to Thunder minus one and a half. I might look at Orlando then. I will say this. The Magic versus teams that are under 500 this season, 17, 26, and one against the spread, 40%. That's awful. Uh, the Magic is a home favorite this season, four and seven against the spread that's 36 percent again awful so like this orlando team you talked about how okay i think what you got here is you got two the spider-man meme man i think you got two teams Mm -hmm. (laughs) that are good as dogs when they're underrated versus the market but when you put them up against each other and they're facing other like teams that will are young and dumb and go as hard as them i I think that maybe they're like they kind of negate each other i'm a little bit worried about this one this is a ballsy pick here uh, not that Jay's not known for making ballsy picks. That's kind of what, what he comes on here every night. <laughs> That's what I do, man. That's what I do, man. 
Johnny, I thought it was Oh, uh, no, I, I, I really don't. This is, I just don't, I'm not, this game doesn't spark too, too much interest for me, especially with all the question marks around, with us looking at them a, a full 24 hours before, this is not a game that jumped off the sheet to me. All right. Well, one that did jump off the sheet to you for some reason, and I'm going to try and talk you out of this because this right. is madness. Yeah. Uh, the, the Memphis Grizzlies this season on the road, they are the best home team. I'm sorry, the second best home team ATS in the league. They're the best in ATS margin at home on the yeah. road. However, it's a different story. The Memphis Grizzlies are eight and 10 straight up on the road, five, 11 and two on the road this season, 31% against the spread on the road, lay in seven, Versus the very awful Charlotte Hornets. Yep. G- talk me into this one. Yeah, Memphis Grizzlies, minus seven, minus 110. John the gang, like you said, have been terrible on the road. But this is a double-digit win for the Grizzlies here. Six, the Grizzlies are six full points better at home versus on the road. They're scoring 118 versus 112. You, you laid it out there. They have a terrible against the spread record on the road. We know the stories. But the Charlotte Hornets are trash. Five and 13 straight up, six, 11 and one against the spread at home. And the key here for me and what, what, when I jumped into it and, and started digging in, I don't really know how the Hornets are going to score. That's going to be the big thing. Uh, the last 10 games and, and even you can go back even 20, uh, 11 or 12 for the Grizzlies. They've just been completely lights out on the defensive end. First in defensive rating, first in blocks with JJJ leading the way now DPOI. He's the favorite there. First in, in uh, defensive rebounds at 50 a game. And then we talk about the Hornets on, on their side on allowing second chance points. 25th in the NBA. They're giving up 14.7 second chance points again. And that's really bad news against a big long with Adams and JJJ Memphis team who rebounds really well. Both teams are shooting it extremely bad from three. I also lean the under here in this spot. Maybe we can get some regression. They've the, the Grizzlies are the worst team the last 10 games in the NBA shooting the three at like 29 and a half percent. It's been absolutely horrendous. But I don't see who's going to slow up Morant in this spot. He should cook just like LeBron did the other night against the Hornets. No Oubre now who uh, who's out four to six. And uh, as, unless Ball and Rozier score 40 apiece here, I don't see who's going to score enough points for the Hornets to have them compete in this game. I, I, especially with we, everybody in the world that watches the NBA and we watch it very closely knows that Memphis is terrible on the road. This is this, this is a really good, good, a get right spot for them. That's why the number opened at six, moved to six and a half is now is at seven. I like it at seven. I think it's a double digit win for the Grizzlies. This is where they get right. They've won two of their last three on the road as well. They've been playing really well on defense. Jaws going to get it done on offense. I don't know how the Hornets score. I like, I like the Grizzlies here big against the Charlotte Hornets. All right, let's do this. Let's go ahead. I've got home court on average calculated about 3.1 right now. Let's go ahead and round it down to three. Let's just go ahead and and give them the six on either side. Okay. And that's maybe a little bit generous towards Charlotte here, but let's go ahead and do it. That makes this 13 in Memphis. That's a touch. That, that's a touch high, but I still think it's 11, 11, 10 and a half, 11 point spread in Memphis. And I, I would have no problem laying that. Okay. I, I don't know what, what number would, what would you make this number in, in Charlotte then Matt? Well, I mean, I, I'll just tell you that, that that's just based off that we take the seven and we add the six, right? Sure. So like I make this, um matchup I, I lean towards you i've got an eight and power rating at right. about 7.8 so i got a little bit of a bad point of difference like i don't mind that right the problem is like those numbers are going to accommodate how they perform at home here's my big argument for you okay charlotte is terrible you're true do you know what the one thing that they're good at is transition defense they're ninth in the league in transition defense per possession the only fucking thing the memphis grizzlies can do offensively is get out and run that's why they're awesome at home and that's why they're shitty on the road when you have the home crowd behind you the defense can't hear you're getting out in transition you're causing mayhem and you're getting out and you're running and you're running the ball down their throat we've seen this time and time and time again that's their model and then they go on the road and it's it's a lot harder for them. And they're going in the, against set defenses. Home team scoring better because they're at home. Home shooters are shooting better. Grizzlies going into set defense a little bit more. And it's tougher for them. They'll have their way with the Charlotte offense, right? 
I kind of lean towards the with the under here based off of that projection, right? Because the Memphis yeah. defense has been so damn good. Their half court, they are now like the second best half court defense in the league behind the Sixers. They should be able to shut this team down and that'll help them run. It's a question of like, how much are they going to be able to score in the, in the other one? This is why like it gets all mixed up to me. I don't want to play Hornets under any circumstances. I'm with you there. <laughs> don't want any part of that. Right. Okay? What do, what's your read on this game? Well, I guess what's good for my guy Sean here is the Grizzlies are six and one straight up in against the spread last seven versus the Hornets. They basically basically owned them. Uh, Hornets are without Ubre and Hayward now, so that's even another hit. Um, the only thing that I don't like when I'm looking at this game, the last time these two uh, teams faced off, the Grizzlies beat them by 31 points. Um, you are going to remember that, so it's not. So, but I can tell you, it's Grizzlies or nothing. I'm not looking towards taking the Hornets here. Um, you could argue that they're at the house. You could argue that the Grizzlies have a front end of a back to back, but they have been great on the road. Uh, it's Touch too high for me. Maybe it feels like minus five. I'd be landed, but um, I couldn't talk Sean off. I could only look towards the Grizz here. The Hornets are certified ass, in my opinion. I'm not looking towards them ever. Certified ass. Love certified that. Ass. Certified Lonzo ass. Ball, Lonzo Ball didn't play in that last game. That was a blowout. And something tells me about Lonzo Ball doesn't sit at home and, and think about blowout games that he didn't play <laughs> in against the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't think he's thinking about that. He's going to try to come out and get some buckets. If I can avoid a 40-piece from Ball and Rozier, I think this is a double-digit win from the Grizzlies. No Brandon Clark. Zaire Williams, questionable. Santi Aldama is questionable. I can't get there. I, I applaud you for your bravery. But the other <laughs> thing I'll say is, like, when we got a trend like this and when we see Memphis and how they played on the road, right, again, I, I'm in a spot where I don't need to play these things trying to, to say, like, the market's overreacting to these trends when it's like, how do I know that they're not just going to underperform that anyway, right? Like, their they're, they're point differential on the road, like, their ATS differential on the road is so bad. Um, they are against the spread. Yeah, this is a big one here, Sean. It's not just the 5-11 and 2. They're minus 5.4 in ATS differential. Like... That's a that's a big number for AT. Like they're not just not covering. It's not like oh they almost covered but they didn't. Like they're losing straight up. Let me see what they are as a favorite though. That's that is one more more question to kind of consider here. Okay, okay, a little better. Five seven and two up to 42 percent. They win the game, uh, fifty seven percent of the time, and they're only minus two point nine and ATS differential as a favorite. Not good, obviously. Uh, but I can see it. I still, you haven't sold me on getting, on, on getting there. Good luck to you, sir. Um, Thank you. my best bet is going to be bulls nets under two thirty five. This is a, a patently ridiculous figure. I'm sorry. This is a ridiculous number. Um, just based off of the number alone, I have to play this when I have more than an edge of 10 points on an, on an under I've been lights out this season, uh, based off of the projection model. I've got you this have been lights out on the unders for sure. I've, I've been, I've got this at two twenty three. Um, what this really just comes down to is, Chicago, it takes a lot of two point shots. Uh, the Nets defense is still underrated in the market. Like this number is just telling you, like, no, 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 this should be a shootout. Like this is a 235 number. And I, I get that everybody's dropping 50. Don't get me wrong. Right. I, I hear it. But this number is saying, like, oh, this is going to be a shootout. Neither team can defend. And that's wrong. That's patently not true. Like that's just an inaccurate description of where these two teams are at in the course of the season. The Nets are a top 10 defense and overall adjusted net rating. Their half court defense is third best in the league. Their only real weakness is in transition. Chicago's not a great transition team. Chicago is 17th in defensive rating. That's not good. It's not bottom 10 either. Chicago is not a dumpster fire defensively. They're just not great. And even if the Nets put up a big number, I don't think Chicago is going to be able to put up a big number on this Nets defense, especially versus a switching defense, because guess what? A lot of the, the Bulls offense is, oh, Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan will punish the drop. Mm -hmm. They're not going to drop. They're going to switch everything. DeMar versus the switching defense is one of the reasons he struggles in the playoffs. So I've got this projected under. I like the spot. I there's just like nothing about this that kind of scares me off of it. Uh, we've got both games on one game, both teams on one game rest. I don't have to worry about a rest disadvantage here, messing with the effort level on one side or the other. Um, I love this play on the under 235 and a half. If this gets wild because the Bulls games usually go wild, that's fine. I will say this I looked at Nets on the road, Bulls at home, both those lean under, both those lean towards the defenses. Have, giving up less than the expected team total. So what you have here is you have like basically situations where the Bulls are in a better position to play defense because they're better at home. The Nets defense on the road is better than what the market projects. 
So both sides of that, I really like this under. I'm going to go ahead and play the under 235 and a half. Final one for me is going to be Lakers plus four and a half. This is, the, again, like it's going to be a number play here. I will also say, like, I like the Lakers. I did not play them the other night versus the Hornets, and I was really killing myself uh, in that game as well as versus the Magic. I was upset with myself because I was like, well, I can't trust them without AD, blah, 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 blah. I, I got a lot of factors going in favor here. Number likes this quite a bit. Uh, the number on this, I, you're not going to believe this, with home court advantage, if with standard home court advantage, I still power rate this as Lakers should be favorites. With home court advantage, I make them four-point favorites. You could say that's ridiculous. That's fine. I'm telling you Miami has done nothing to earn this kind of respect. This play, I will say, is a little bit more concerning based off of the recent trends. Miami's been playing a little bit better. I, I grant that. So have the Lakers. Lakers are on a little bit of a roll. Like They're playing 500 ball here with LeBron going off every night, especially with LeBron chasing Kareem. He's in within distance. He needs to go ahead and get this thing done. Make sure that he can do it before he gets before he gets injured, right? You want to take care of it. You want to be on timeline. A motivated LeBron, that's a really good spot. I've got LA nightlife in effect on a West Coast road trip for the Miami Heat, like that angle as well. So I'll go ahead and I'll do it. I'm going to grab the four and a half of the Lakers and I'm going to play the money line on the Lakers for a half unit as well. Jay, what do you think? I couldn't talk you off. It's definitely a revenge spot. They just lost to the Heat not too long ago. Obviously, they didn't have LeBron in that one. Um, you make some good points. I, I kind of would kind of just go with LeBron points over. I don't like the fit that Heat really kind of been balling. I thought it was going to be a closer game uh, in the, versus the Clippers the other day. It was a one point game. Before you know it, they're up by twenty. So I'm scared. This Heat team has really found something. Um, and you do have the Lakers first game on the first game at home off for five ga- uh, five straight road games as well. Yeah. So uh, it's a tough one, but you're definitely getting a better number with LeBron being questionable if he's uh, ruled in this one definitely probably goes down to at least three in my opinion so i couldn't talk you off man it's two teams that's playing playing really well right now yeah look if lebron's out i'm buying out like i'll just sure. I'll, I'll take I was it just gonna say yeah you i'll take it buy out LeBron i'm done out. i'm out yeah Le- lebron chasing uh chasing kareem so he could shut it down the rest of the year uh, we, we're, we're reading <laughs> that one wrong he's 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 just trying to get that out the way so he can go ahead and go ahead and kick his feet up and relax. So yeah, LeBron looks great right now. That um that lob reverse windmill, whatever you want to call it, he called it, was insane. So <laughs> yeah, shout out LeBron. He's stuck. he's continuing to do his thing. And uh yeah, sooner rather than later for that, for the for the number one slot all time scoring leader. Yeah, I, I hear you on the on the heat. The thing I I think I I got trouble with here is one. This is a supreme LA nightlife game, right? You you get the big win versus the Clippers. You have an off night in LA, and then you're playing them, and then you're playing the Lakers. That's like it's that's a late a big, night game too. That's it's a late night game mm-hmm. uh, compared to like the East Coast team on the West Coast. It definitely works in your favor. Um, it just scares me. I think the Clippers were in this exact same spot, and I kind of feel like they were going to get it done, and they they ran out of gas. So it, I, I don't like the fact they're coming uh, back home from the first game um, road trip, but uh, yeah. definitely a sleepy late night sleepy spot for the Heat here. All right, we'll see how it works out. Those are going to be our best bets for the Wednesday slate to review. Uh, Jay's got Hawks first half. He's got Magic minus one and a half. Sean is braving and taking the Grizzlies on the road minus seven. I've got Bulls Nets under 235. And God help me, I've got the Los Angeles Lakers at home versus the Heat. That's going to wrap it up for Buckets. Make sure to download the Action Network app. Best way for you to track your picks. You get all sorts of great information in there. You can track these two folks' picks in there as well as mine. Hope you guys have yourselves a great week. We'll be back tomorrow with another Best Bets episode for the Thursday slate. Until then, let's get Buckets. 